Australia is taking a gamble on quantum computers by investing up to $1 billion in a Silicon Valley startup in the hope it will build the world's first commercially useful quantum computer in Brisbane. Now, if your head is swimming, you're not alone. Joining us live now is the Industry and Science Minister, Ed Husick. Minister, good to see you. So um, you're going to have to explain this to me Thank like you. I'm a six-year-old. What is a quantum computer? <laughs> Well, the journey for computing has, uh, has basically been a race to do more with less. Um, if you look at your own smartphone today, it uh, has more uh, processing power and more speed than the computers that helped NASA in the 60s. Uh, and uh, what we are doing in terms of what we're looking at with quantum computing is being able to move data within light. Uh, and that's a lot of the work of what SciQuantum, uh, an Australian-founded uh, firm, uh, is doing. We've had uh, the CEO and uh, co-founder uh, come out of the University of Queensland uh, in Professor Jeremy O'Brien and Terry Rudolph. Uh, they'd been doing a lot of work uh, in this space as researchers uh, and, you know, surprise, surprise, yet more Australians in times past left our shores because they didn't feel like they could get the backing here in Australia and set up SciQuantum uh, over in the US. Okay. The deal that we are announcing brings Australians back home to help build that fault-tolerant computer in a precinct that will strengthen the quantum computing sector in this country. OK, when you, when, you, when you say, you know, moving data fast, I mean, maybe a simple term is it that it's some kind of supercomputer, but just g give me an example of, of what industry this might help when you're moving data fast, what that could achieve. Quantum computing is uh, predicted to provide... Uh, massive processing power, being able to crunch through data in a way that even the most powerful supercomputers today just can't do. And if they're applied to cracking problems uh, and coming up with, for example, new medicines, as you previewed, autonomous systems, uh, helping uh, improve the way energy networks uh, operate in the transition to net zero, uh, there are a range of, and, and obviously possibilities beyond what we're currently thinking, about using that power. Mm. Uh, but again, as some companies say, the internet is becoming uh, almost too small and it has been predicted for some time. Classic computing, today's computing okay. had hit its limits and we need to go beyond that and that's what quantum will do. So am I right in saying... it's a huge investment in our capability. Yeah, huge investment and also a gamble, right? Because none exist until now? Well, hang on a second. Let's, let's just deal straight with, with the way you've referenced that. So SciQuantum is considered a global leader. Uh, in uh, the development of a fault-tolerant quantum computer. They've attracted some of the biggest capital. In terms of our assessment, we've gone through, you know, technical, legal, commercial assessments to make this decision uh, to uh, jointly invest with the Queensland uh, government. In the race to develop a fault-tolerant computer, the finish line expected somewhere between 2026-27. So it's almost so close you can touch it. Uh, we cannot be left behind on this. We've had a history of turning our backs on the know-how of Australians only to have to import capability and, and products down the track, and we're determined to build a future made in Australia and to have the tech edge to make that a reality. OK. Uh, w when you say made in Australia, this is designed and owned in America. So isn't that a contradiction? Well, it's designed by Australian know-how. I mean, these are Australians. Professor O'Brien, for example, is one of the most cited uh, in terms of quantum research. Australia has invested for years in developing our quantum talent. In per capita basis, we have some of the largest stores of quantum talent in people uh, on the planet, and most of the leading firms in, in, this, in this world uh, have got Australian accents operating within them. And what we're saying is, well, why don't we put that know-how to work to build a stronger economy and grow jobs into the future? Right. And SciQuantum's founders want to come back to Australia to help us set up a fault-tolerant quantum computer here. And that's a big move, and it also sets us up well for the future. All right.